Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another unboxing component video for Funkoverse. Today we're going to be exploring the world of Peter Pan. Um, so of course we have good old Captain Hook there and Peter Pan himself. Um, there is a chase variant you can get where Peter Pan is flocked. Um, that's the new thing they've been doing where they have the chase, you know, a little chase symbol on there. You can see in the pictures. It's not like you're buying it randomly and you can't tell. Um, I just wasn't worried about picking up the chase of this one because I'm like, if it's an animal that's flocked, um, that's kind of cool. Like, you know, it's kind of a neat idea. Um, or if it's something like that, like, um, like some of the chases are kind of neat because they kind of fit the characters. Uh, also, like, uh, Queen of Hearts was glitter. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, but, like, I don't know, having a flocked Peter Pan doesn't, doesn't really necessarily do it for me. Um, alright, so, if you're not familiar with what Funkoverse is, just a super, ugh, sorry for the log, a super brief explanation is it's a strategy game where you're gonna mix and match characters um, potentially from different things. You can pick this up, you can play just Peter and Hook, you can pick up a other Disney games like I just mentioned, um, Alice in Wonderland, or you could pick up, you know, Marvel, DC, um, Game of Thrones, Jurassic Park, Golden Girls, uh, you know, pretty much anything you can think of, they're coming out with a little version for this. Um, and you play on a tiled board, and each character has various powers, and they play different types of matches. Uh, so we have all these different components in here. Um, Double-sided maps, tokens, dice, bunch of different cards. Um, at a glance, it looks like a lot, but it's it's generally not too bad. Um, so you have a character that's all going to have their different abilities that can do different stuff. Um, cool down track, basic characters. So the basic characters are essentially used if you don't have enough players uh, or different figures. So like this set only comes with two, um, and that's going to come with a second, essentially a good character and a bad character, a pirate and a lost boy. So you can play a 2v2 game, um, have four characters. Once you pick up another expansion of something else, you can swap out them characters. Um, uh, other than that, yeah, you set up the mode based on however you want to play it. And there's going to be which side board. It'll tell you what rules you're using, where to put your characters, and what to do. Um, now your characters get to move around. So on your turn, you get some very simple actions. Uh, you get to do two things. You get to do your basic actions, which are move, uh, up to two squares, challenge. You have two guys and you're challenging an adjacent target, which could be... Um, a token you're interacting with, another character. Uh, you can assist by picking up a character that's been knocked down so you can get back to the game quicker, or you can interact with things on the board. Um, otherwise, a special action, each character has various abilities you can use. You can use an item that's attached to you, or you can use a companion that is following along with you. Um, and now, this is what also makes the uh, Funkoverse games kind of fun, is because not every game has items, not every game has companions. So the ones that do have some of them, um, definitely make them a little bit more intriguing. Um, the third thing you can do overall is, um, after you've done your move action, you get a rally. Uh, so if your character you've chosen is knocked down, a uh, character can not do basic or special actions. Instead, they use, use both of their actions to stand up. So if your character got knocked over, which prevents you from, like, if you're playing a game where you're trying to, like, reach out, like, run over to score points, um, like, Hook could run over and knock over Peter Pan. There, therefore, Peter Pan loses an entire turn to try and be trying to score points. Uh, this is essentially that. And then four is exhaust your character. Um, you place an exhaustion marker on your character to show that you use them. And this is so that when you're using multiple characters, so if you're playing a game where you're playing two characters, or three or four, however you want to do for your team, you know which character you've already used. Very simple. Next player goes, um, they get to choose which character you want. So again, if you're playing two, two characters each, you don't always have to use the same character the first time during your turn. Um, you could always use a different one, maybe they have a better position on the board, or maybe maybe they were going after something and another player took it first. 
this is going to make more sense for you to move one of your other characters, you know, so on and so forth. Um, end of the round, you do a cooldown. Each player has a tracking marker. You shift everything down. If it shifts off the tracker, it's available to use again. Um, refresh your exhaustion markers and pick a new first player. So overall, fairly simple. Move, challenge, help all your players interact with things. Um, the book does a very good idea of showing how everything moves. So it's showing like here you can move. Um, you can't move where another character is standing. You can't move through walls, but you know you can move around stuff. Uh, doing a challenge is very easily. Um, as a challenger, you get one success for each starburst you get, and a success, three successes for each exclamation points. And if a rival is defending, they get one success for each shield. Um, and basically, if your successes are higher than the shield for the challenge, you win the challenge. Very simple. Um, and ability, you just follow whatever the ability says. Spending ability token, um, by putting on your cooldown track shown by the number. So I hear he has a 3, a 1, and a 3. If you want to use his 3 ability, you take your red token and you put it on the 3 spot in your track. So it's going to take 3 turns to cool down before he can use that again. Same thing with the gears, he'll have 2 of them. Um, so if he puts it on the 1, the next turn he'll go off the track and he can use, the, he can use his token again. But if he puts it on the 3, he'll have to wait 3 turns. But it also means he won't be able to use his other gear because he won't have it available. Um, yeah, very good. Then, uh, yeah, just then the book goes through and just describes adjacency, um, what your characters can see for line of sight for different objects, um, movement actions where you can and can't move. I'm not going to go through all of this in here. I'll just kind of show them off. But it does do some very good stuff. More stuff on re resolving challenges in case they have range. Um, characters all have a defense number, which shows how many dice they get for challenging, um, or defending multiple characters. So, like, here's a basic challenge. You know, knocking out a target. If you knock out a target, they get knocked off the board. Um, so it says, basically here, it's like, if the challenge is succeed, uh, defender says the rival is knocked down. And then if you challenge a knockdown character and you win, they get removed from the board. So, knocking down a character is like one hit. It hampers them for a turn. That's why your character might end up wanting to spend both their actions doing it. But if another another one on your team comes over and knocks that guy out, or you do a secondary attack and knock him off the board, then they go to their cooldown track. And it takes another full turn for them to come back onto the board. Um, but then the thing is, they don't come back where they started, they have to come back somewhere. So there's ranged attacks, lots of different fun stuff. Um, and you can play just a general game, you can make up your own rules, that's what really makes this interesting. Um, but then they also have special scenarios we'll kind of just take a quick look at as well, which have different structured rules. Um, and then there's the four different types of abilities, there's blue which are your, uh, like, agility, fitness, coordination abilities, your reg, which are your strength and fortitude, your gear, gray one, which is your cunning, ingenuity, and deception, and your yellow, which is kind of your leadership, charisma, and willpower. Um, and some characters have traits, and there's other stuff. Every game, again, has its own little stuff. There's special items, bonus objectives, uh, using companions, uh, and then again, mixing games, free-for-all, stuff like that. And then a giant glossary of everything. Um, it's definitely fun there. Alright, so what we want to do is we want to look at uh, what all comes in the box here. So, we're going to get... This is our cooldown track. So, every Funkoverse game will come with one of these. So, again, it's like, if Peter Fan gets knocked out, he goes on his cooldown track. If he uses a, an ability or a token, it can go on one of these other ones. Um, and then it takes a while for it to be reused. And you're going to get two of these, one for each character. Um, if you're uh, ever playing a game with more characters, you'll get more of those. Um, then we have a bunch of cards we're going to get. We'll look at those. Those are our character cards. Uh, but we're going to get a six pack of dice, which are either going to have one starburst, um, I have a starburst, a exclamation point, or a shield. Um, I think it's one shield, two shields, 
one exclamation point, and the rest are starburst. So, so you know, decent odds there. You're going to get little crystals. So I'm not going to take these out of my bag. Um, but these are essentially your point counters. Usually throughout the game, every game has a different color, a little bit different feel. These ones are green, which we've seen in other games, but they have little sparkles in them to make them a little bit more unique. You have a base with in items. Uh, the bases are one to help the character stand a little bit better. Also, it's supposed to be the idea is you can track whose team you're on. So, um, if I play multiple characters, I can have my team on white, the opponents on the black. That way you could mix technically good and bad characters together. Uh, so that's actually a fun idea as well. Um, and then you get some of the other sets, they might have different colored bases. Then we get all these tokens. Um... So we have a first player token, or just to keep track of that, we have exhausted tokens you can put on your characters to show that they've been exhausted. They do have point crystals which you can put on the board, which will have letters, which might dictate where stuff goes. Um, or you put these on the board to show that's where a crystal would go, uh, just for like a setup in the game. That way something gets moved around. Um, we got some squares for other ones. Uh, there's a flag and a star for different scenario modes. Um, so a bunch of those stuff. Then we get our ability tokens. So each character will always get two, which will match their character card. So we have Captain Hook, and we'll look at these in more detail, and Peter Pang. And then down in the bottom corner, it'll show which two dots they get. So they get a blue and a red, and a gray and a red. So they're not even going to have a yellow in this entire set. Um, so that's a little bit different there. We get a cannon. That's kind of cool. Um, our generic characters. So these will work like the big guys. Just, you know, their little tokens. And it shows if they're knocked down. Since you can't physically knock down a token. And then a Tinkerbell companion. Which has a knockdown and non-knockdown side. So those are all our tokens. That's all our kind of components. Um, but... Let's look at our characters really quick. Here we got good old Peter Pan. These are, of course, like, they're miniature versions of the Funkos. Uh, so we got Peter. And let's look at what Peter Pan can do. So we're going to grab my easel here and see what Peter Pan's abilities are. Peter Pan says... Yeah, I'm trying to peek out the back there. He has, uh, on his bottom, he has his special ability called You Can Fly. When Peter shifts off your cooldown track, you may place him on a point marker or a point marker set up square. So he gets to come on the board wherever you want instead of one of the starting areas. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so he should be does get knocked down um, or knocked out. He can go ahead and come in where you need him to come in. His first ability costs uh, a red is swooping charge. And then the little action symbol after it means that you have to do a challenge. So it's just a good reminder that it's a challenge ability. It says move to do a basic challenge. So instead of using uh, two actions, to one to move to and one to do a basic challenge, you can use one action to do both. Uh, but he has to then spend his thing, which will take two turns to recharge. He has happy little thoughts, which costs a blue. Um, place Peter on one of your cooldown on one on one of your cooldown track or shift them off your cooldown track. Peter can do this ability even while knocked out. Um, so this is kind of cool. So basically, you can either put him on there and then end of the turn, that'll uh, he'll leave the track and then he'll um, use use the you can fly ability. You can put him right onto a point marker so you can get him where he needs to be. So essentially, he has like almost an infinite travel ability it just takes an extra turn to do but if you're trying to instead of having to spend a move action to move even if he moves twice he can only move four squares um so it's gonna essentially let him cross the entire board in two turns so instead of eight squares which is six um a board is six squares wide that's not right The smaller of the two boards is only six squares one direction. Uh, but then the other, the long direction, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's ten spaces, so you have to move, it takes him three turns to get across. The other side is a lot bigger. 
um, yeah, start potentially to give him ways to move around a lot quicker. Um, or if he's already on the board, you could use the next use him uh, to move off immediately on his next turn. Um, so he has codfish on a hook, challenge for three. Uh, so that means you're gonna roll three dice, and then challenge two, you're gonna roll two dice. Um, and then both targets must be standing. Uh, so yeah, this lets him do multiple challenges, which is kind of fun. Um, but it costs three, so then again, he's not able to use it again for a while. And while that blue token is on the cooldown track, he can't use happy little thoughts. So it's, you know, it's kind of a, a, a little trade back and forth. He gets some good attacks in, then he's not going to be allowed to use his other movement ability for a little bit. Um, Alright, so that was Peter Pang. Now let's look at Captain Hook, which for some reason I wanted to call him Philip. I know that's probably not anywhere near his name. Um, but my brain just went to Philip Hook for some reason. Um, I must be tired. Alright, so Captain Hook. Uh, he has Man the Long Tom. At the beginning of the game, place the cannon token outside the edge of the board and give Hook and give Hook the fire status card at the beginning of Hook's turn. The cannon may move along three. So you get to put this cannon token on the edge of the board, and that's at the beginning of the turn you may do a move three along the edge of the map. So if he's on the edge of the board here, he can move this over over different spaces. So he can basically trail this along along the edge of the board to do wherever he wants it to fire. Then he gets a special status card, just specifically for him, which says uh, fire. Is that the one we wanted? Yep. Uh, maybe I missed one somewhere. Um, so he has a fire card. It says, anytime during Hook's turn, you may do a two challenge to each rival in the canyon's row. If you win any of these challenges, put this on the cooldown track of your, uh, on the three of your cooldown track. So yeah, during your turn, you can challenge two to anyone in the entire line. So when you're talking a board that might have, like that, was that small one had, uh, six to one direction. So that's shooting six spaces, or the other side was ten. He could shoot all throughout all ten spaces. Um, if you went line it up nice, because um, you could move it first, and then you could fire this. And if he if he wins any of them, then you can't use this again for another three turns. But if you for some whatever reason lose both of them or multiples of them, um, then you can go ahead and use it the next turn. So it's actually not like it's not like you have to lose it either way. So yeah, he'll have this extra special little card. Um, so I was confused because it says, Give Hook the Fire. I thought the card was called uh, Hook the Fire was the name of the card. It's just called Give Hook the Card Fire. Um, so his other abilities are Taste for Cold Steel, Challenge 4, and Move the Target 1 Square. Oh, so that's kind of fun. So basically he gets a really good challenge. So he's probably going to win. Um, and then he gets to knock them away. Uh, shorten the fuse. Move one. Shift a token or status card on your cooldown track one. So this will let you use your cannon more often. Um, and then menacing captain. An ally hook can see does two basic actions. Then hook does a challenge one to that ally. So this is kind of neat. Um, so imagine him like ordering me around, and then. Um, you'd be like, Smee, do this. And you know, like, so someone he can see can be like, across the board, you can tell him to do something. So you can have a guy move extra spaces or, um, attack somebody else or do something. But then he has to challenge one against that guy so he could potentially knock that guy out as, as he hurts them. Uh, it's just kind of a fun little mechanic that does go very well with Captain Hook. Um... So then the next thing I want to look at is the item. So just about, and I don't want to say everything, but I think just about every single um, Funko game comes with an item. So we're actually going to give a little item there. So now Captain Hook has his sword. Now the items can go to any character. So I could give that to Peter Pan as well. So Peter Pan could steal Hook's sword. Um, you know, or 
you could get it to any other character in any other game. If I'm playing, you know, uh, Marvel, I could give the sword to Iron Man. You know, so what's going to happen there is we're going to have an actual little card called an item, which will say sword. It says, this character, when this character challenges an adjacent rival, you may re-roll one shield. Um, so if you roll a shield, which is basically a miss for you, you get a re-roll one. So it's actually kind of a neat little simple weapon. It's not, you know, some some items in the game do a little bit more than others. Um, some go on the cooldown track, some don't. But that's just kind of a fun little extra bonus. Um, but it has to be an adjacent rival. So, like, it wouldn't work if he's doing it for the canyon or when uh, Hook's telling him uh, his ally to do something else. We also get in this set was our companion card. Um... Which was Tinkerbell, so that'll just work as this little token. So she only has one defense, but she has two special abilities, well, three special abilities. She has Distracting on the bottom. Uh, rivals adjacent to Tinkerbell have one defense, so she can give guys extra defense, which is really cool. Um, she can move up to two squares, and Pixie Dust assist Tinkerbell's uh, paired character if they're adjacent. If they're adjacent, put Tinkerbell on one of your cooldown traps. Uh, so she gets to do an assist action. Um, so basically how companions work. I kind of skipped over that part. Um, so I just want to read over it. Show this. So, okay. Some have companions. Uh, companions are attaching are always paired with a character and provide a player with an additional ally that can do a specific limited actions. Uh, character cannot be paired, uh, basic characters cannot be compared with companions. So since beginning of the game, if I'm playing Peter Pan, I can pick, pick Tinkerbell, and then they're always kind of linked together. Now, again, you could put them with Hook if you want. You're playing a different game. You can put her with, yo know, Jon Snow instead of his, his, uh, uh, wolf Buddy from Game of Thrones. Uh, you could put him with a T-Rex. Uh, so a lot of different things you can do there. So playing a companion is always part of the character. Attach the card to the place to the character's card. At the beginning of the game, whenever a companion ships off the cooldown track, place the companion in your starting area. So then they essentially work like a regular character. Um, they're not characters, but follow the same rules for adjacency, movement, blocking line of sight, and what they can see as characters. Um, rivals and allies may not be placed onto their end movement or their square, so you, you, know, you treat them like they're a physical character on the board, even though they're just a token. Um, so it says, when a character thing attacks companion takes a turn, the companion gets one additional action, choose from those listed on their card. Character may give up to one or more of their actions to allow the companion to take more actions. So, Peter gets two actions, he could give an extra one to... Tinkerbell if they wanted to. Um, and some 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 companions will make more sense than the other one. A companion is challenged and loses room up from the board. Place it on the cooldown track. Uh, but you don't gain points for knocking out companions. Um, when a companion knocks their rival, the credit for the knockout goes to the companion. So, in some of the games, you get points for knocking out other characters. So, if a companion um, is able to attack and knocks out another player... So, if, like, in this, obviously, Tinkerbell doesn't have any challenges. But if, let's say, she did and she knocked out Hook, uh, Peter would get the points for it. But if Hook knocks out Tinkerbell, nothing happens. Uh, but does get her off the board so she can't use her bonuses. Um, some of the next two cards we have are just blank here on the back. These are your basic ones, which are represented by the little tokens. These are your other characters you can use. Substitute if you don't have... The special characters. So we have a pirate and we have a lost boy. And this just shows their basic actions. Move, challenge, assist, interact, and rally. The same basic actions the regular characters have. They just don't have special actions. Uh, not always a bad thing to start the game off with. Just until you get used to how the characters play and everything. Alright, now we are going to look at the board. So we have a big, giant board here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So this is our play board. So this is one side. This is 
Um, not every game does this, but some of the games have been doing this. Um, the smaller sets, at least, which is kind of like a starter board. It's a little bit smaller. It has, um, you can see up here, um, both sides has things for the tracking the characters, where to put your character cards, your item cards. Um, and that little smaller spot here, if you have your, instead of having a full character card, it's like Captain Hook, and then you have a spot there for your smaller one if you have that. Uh, spot for, uh, your ability tokens, your cooldown track on the side. Just, you know, a little basic gameplay element. Uh, once you play a while, you don't really need that. Um, but it's there. But this is Pirate's Cove. Um, one thing about all the boards, even though they all look very different, um, and they all have a different feel to them, they're all essentially symmetrical. So we have a big piece that blocks in the middle of four areas here, and we have another one there. And we have a little tiny one in each of these sides, and a little block there. So it has like them green borders are what block them. And then we have our guys that go on the board. And then this is how they play around. They might have something where you have, you know, these crystal tokens. And then, you know, they're going to fight to get over to grab that crystal token. Maybe then they have to run it back to their start area. And that's sort of how the game is played. Um, the details on the maps are always really nice, too. Um, this is, I call it Pirate's Cove. What's this actually called? The Mermaid Lagoon. Um, you know, there's no mermaids on there. But there's the happy little crocodile. Um, so now if we flip it over, we have Hook's Ship, which is specifically the Jolly Roger. Now you can see this is a lot bigger. It's a full board, um, but it's still going to have that same symmetrical aspect to it. So it's on one side, we have one there, one there, posts in the middle. Uh, but now instead of having big blocks, this actually has like big borders around it. So if you want to get into the middle, you're going to have to come into one of these sides and then exit back out. You can't cross through it the cabin uh the cabin wall so it's kind of a neat uh different thing every board's a little bit different as well now the stairs don't make any difference there's of course a lot of little details on here um i'm gonna kind of look at it a little bit closer there's the alarm clock um here's uh the teddy bear uh lots of different little things there's some shackles some treasure chests there's uh one of the umbrellas which is was that john's umbrella uh, one of the hammers, I think, was from the one of the Lost Boys. Um, if I'm remembering right, um, I have not seen Peter Pan in forever. Um, there's a map. Um, different stuff there. Some like the different weapons on the wall here. Let me flip this up this direction. And then we have a uh, hooks hat. Um, with like his, uh, beard polish, his different, uh, his little case of different, uh, hooks. Um, he's got John's glasses, I believe. We have Tinkerbell's lantern that she was in. Yes, yeah, so lots of little extra details on these boards, which is really one of the fun parts about these boards. Uh, so, alright, so then one last thing we want to look at. So, for the game mode, you're going to get these two big cards. Um, so... Each one will have one map for one side, and then one map for the other side. Um, and then most games have the same four. So, like, for the Mermaid Lagoon, you can play Territory or Leaders. And for the Jolly Roger, you can play Control and Flags. Those are the typical four uh, main ones for most of the Funko games, just be by them. Now, some of the games will have other different modes. Um, top of my head is the Space Jam set has a basketball mode. The Alice in Wonderland has a croquet mode. Um, the Marvel ones have special modes to have little tokens and stuff. So some of them sets are fun to pick up and mix and match just because they get you additional modes to play. Some of the games are fun to pick up because the maps are neat. Some have different items that are cool. Some you just want the characters. Um, the other set's definitely cool there. So we're going to kind of just do a brief rundown of what each of these do. So control is going to show how you set all of these up. Um, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to gain points. Uh, if any control marker shows your color at the end of the round, you gain one point. So you want to get your characters from your starting area to one of these three control areas. Uh, if you have the most control markers, 
At the end of the round, you gain an extra point. If you knock out a rival, you gain a point. And if you interact with one of the four point markers, you also gain a point. Um, so basically, you want to do is get your character into one of these zones and have them stay in that zone. And then you gain points. Um, and then, yeah, so that's essentially how that works. And this is a player with two characters per side gains six points. The only player with three characters must gain ten. Um... Yeah, and again, you can always up these points or decrease them, you know, house rule if you'd like. Then, if we look at flags, which is capture the flag, essentially. So now you're going to click these little flag tokens. Um, it says gaining points if a character returns their starting area using the rule above gain two points. So when you're wrong, and you check to see if any of your characters standing on or adjacent to your opponent's flag. If so, you may choose to return one or more of those characters to your starting area. Um, knock out a rival, gain a point, interact to point markers. So that always lets you knock out characters or interact are different ways to gain points than the other things. Um, but the idea for this one is it's just to get to the other side and basically stand on their flag. Um, now I would almost change the rules to this. I, personally, if I was, you know, if I wanted to, I'd change the other little flags. I would say make it full capture the flag mode. Um, and so you have to get that flag, and then you have to try and run it back to your area. And then if you get knocked out, that gets dropped wherever your character is. And then either a teammate can pick it up, or an app, or a, a owner of the flag can pick it up and return it back to the base. They make it worth more points. Um, you know, so that way, just a little bit different. That's just my thought on that. Uh, then we have Territory. Uh, so this is, losses are very much the same type of game with just different setups. So again, we have knocking out players, getting point markers, but we have, uh, if one or more of your characters in a scoring area at the end of the round gain one point, ignore this when playing with two characters per side. So territories is just trying, um... One or more of your characters in a scoring area at the end of the round gain one point. Ignore us from playing with two characters per side. You have the most characters in a scoring round at the end of each round gain one extra point. Um, oh, okay. So that's kind of a weird way to word that. Because it's like if you, have, if you have more players in there, you gain points. But yeah, whatever. The best you're trying to do is... Um, so like we were looking at with control, you want to be in one of the multiple areas... Here it's more or less like King of the Hill. You want to try and be the guy that has the most or the only characters in there. So you don't want to try and knock your characters out or knock them back. So like Hook's knockback ability could work really well in here. You can knock the guy out of that scoring area. Um, Peter Pan could also go like make this harder on himself because he could potentially you know, pull himself off the board. Uh, then we have Leaders. Um, says... Scenario side up, uh, starting player, each places their leaders on these star squares. There's a little cool star squares there. Um, and the leader squares are not used after that. So, this is essentially a knockout game. This is more of a brawl. So, if your leader knocks out a rival leader, you gain four points. Um, if your leader's allies knock out a rival leader, they gain three points. If your leader knocks out a rival... Uh, you gain two points, and if a leader's ally knocks out a rival, you gain one point. So, leaders knock out leaders, most points. Leaders knocking out, you know, a minion type character, or a second character, only get three. Um, or sorry, an ally knocking out a leader gets three. A leader knocking out an ally gets two, and then an ally knocking out an ally gets one. So basically, the higher ranked characters get more points for knocking out higher level characters. Uh, and then you get points for character marks. And that's 6 and 10 again for the points. So they're all very basic like that. But the idea again is, you know, with all of these, it's just to like, you know, um, either take control of an area or knock, knock out characters. And that's the whole point of the game. Just there's different little starting things. But you can always play your own modes or pick up some of the rules that have special um, objectives in there. Alright, so that's what we had for uh, Peter Pang. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Funkoverse video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.